Hi boys and girls, I'm Miss Lydia from the Boston Library. Thank you so much for joining me today for story time. Today we are talking about the beginning of winter and what the animals do when winter comes. We're going to start with this book. It's called Winter Dance by Marion Dane Bauer with illustrations by Richard Jones. A single snowflake floats through the air, spins, leaps, and settles on the nose of a fine red fox. Winter is coming, says the fox. What should I do? I can tell you what to do, says a woolly caterpillar. Wrap yourself in a shiny chrysalis so you'll wake up to a butterfly spring. And the woolly caterpillar crawls away to do just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. I'm not meant to fly. I can tell you what to do, a turtle calls. Tip your tail to the sky and swim down, down, down. To bury yourself in the slick, cool mud. And the turtle does just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. Mud is much too muddy. Let me tell you what to do, whispers a bat. Zig and zag and swoop into a cave. Then hang by your toes and go to sleep. And the bat does just that. Do you see those bats hanging in that cave? They're pretty hard to spot. That won't do for me, says the fox. My toes would get tired from hanging upside down like that. Plop, an acorn drops from a tree. Who do you think sent that? I can tell you what to do, chatters a squirrel. Gather, 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 then quick, quick, hide everything away. And he scampers off to do just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. I don't even like acorns. We'll tell you what to do, geese honk from the sky. Flap your wings and fly away to warm days and silky soft nights. They're flying south. And going, going, gone, the geese do just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. I belong here in the forest. A snowshoe hare hops by his new in his new winter coat. I can tell you what to do, he says. Turn yourself white to match the snow. And the snowshoe hare, who has done just that, disappears into the whitening world. That won't do for me either, says the fox. I love my red fur. I can tell you exactly what to do, says a great black bear. Curl beneath the roots of a toppled balsam tree and tuck all of your growls away. And the great black bear does just that. Mary is going to sleep. That won't do for me at all, says the fox. I'm not even a bit sleepy. Hush, the wind sighs, hush. The fox lies down on the forest floor and puts his nose between his paws. The sun slides down the blue bowl of the sky. Hush, the wind says again. The fox hushes. More snowflakes land on his nose. And then a whistle, soft, soft. A white-tipped tail, golden eyes. I can tell you what to do, says a fine red fox, bowing low. When a million snowflakes fill the air, twirling, tumbling, spinning, waltzing, you and I join them. Of course, says the fox, standing tall because that's what we find red foxes do in winter. We dance. Our next book is Bear Snores On by Carmel Wilson. In a cave in the woods, in his deep dark lair, through the long cold winter sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap, with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day 
and he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter pat tiptoe, creep crawls into the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. He's got a little fire. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop, but the bear snores on. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who is there? And a hare hops in. Ho, oh, mouse, says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. Mouse sips wee slurps, hare burps, big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums, perhaps we can share? I've brought honey nuts, badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. And then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters wren. And everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Do you see the animals dancing? Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons stew, then a small pepper fleck makes the bear a chew. He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. Oh no, the bear's awake. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. You've snuck in my lair and you've had all the fun. But me, I was sleeping and I have had none. And he whimpers and he moans and he wails and he groans. And the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks. Don't fret, don't fuss, look see. We can pop more corn, we can brew more tea. Bear gulps, bear gobbles, he sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, bear can't sleep. But his friends snore on. They're all tired out from partying and now the bear's awake. Our next book is called Snooza Palooza by Kimberly Gard. A cold wind blows, a snow starts to fall, mouse hides in a den that's cozy and small. One, snuggling into a wee sized heap, one begins snoring and drifts off to sleep. He dozes and dreams, tucked out of sight, a snooza palooza all day and all night. Snail crawls in, slipping under a leaf. Sealed up in her shell, she falls fast asleep. Snuggling into a tiny heap, now two are snoring. They're both sound asleep. They doze and they dream, tucked out of sight. A snooze of a loser all day and all night. Mole tunnels up from under the ground. He sneaks in quietly, settling down. Snuggling into a little heap, now three are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream, tucked out of sight. A snooze of palooza all day and all night. In from the cold comes a weary chipmunk, nuzzling into a soft, furry bunk, snuggling into a bigger heap. Now four are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream, tucked out of sight. A snooze of palooza all day and all night. 
Hedgehog wh whirls by, slips sliding on ice, tumbling in where it's cozy and nice. Snuggling into a growing heap, now five are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream tucked out of sight, a snooze up a all day and all night. Rabbit scurries in, piling on, settling down with a stretch and a yawn. Snuggling into a rising heap, now six are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream tucked out of sight, a snooze up a all day and all night. Skunk walks on tiptoe without a peep. She closes her eyes and nods off to sleep, snuggling into a mighty heap. Now, how many are there? Seven are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream, tucked out of sight, a snooze of Palooza all day and all night. A gust of wind whirls outside the den. Fox's teeth chatter. His fur stands on end, snuggling into a grand size heap. Now, eight are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream, tucked out of sight, a snooze of Palooza all day and all night. Grumpy Badger bores into the hole and cuddles in between Rabbit and Mole, snuggling into a giant heap. Now, nine are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream, tucked out of sight, a snooze of Palooza all day and all night. Who's coming along now? Bear's cold and tired. He needs a rest. He squeezes inside and joins the snooze fest. Snuggling into a massive heap. Now ten are snoring. They're all sound asleep. They doze and they dream tucked out of sight. A snooze of Palooza all day and all night. All snuggled up into the middle. They snore and they snooze. From big to little, they snore and snore and then snore some more. It's a zzz sounding roar, rattling clear across the floor, rumbling right out the door. The other wood creatures tremble in fear. What's that sound? They yell as they cover their ears. They look and search for the source of the roar, then gape at the monster's ten animal snore. Wren has an idea and begins to sing. Tweet a tweet through the woods and her tiny voice rings. Robin joins the song and then Chickadee, deer nods and hums loudly with a wild turkey. Elk balls and the crow caws and moose snorts off key. Wolf howls and squirrel chatters along noisily. The 10 voice chorus with sounds high and low sings above the snores and their rowdy song goes, wake up, wake up, wake up. Mouse opens an eye as light fills the den. He stretches and yawns with his other nine friends. Their long nap is done, but they make a pact. Next winter, we promise we'll all come back and you can count on that. Our last book for the day is called Under the Snow by Melissa Stewart. In the heart of the winter, a deep layer of snow blankets fields and forests, ponds and wetlands. You spend your days sledding and skating and having snowball fights. But under the snow lies a hidden world. Under the snow in a field, Dozens of ladybugs pack themselves into a gap in an old stone wall. Below them, a snake rests in a hole all its own. Voles spend their days tunneling through the snow. When they find a young tree, they slowly strip off the layers of bark and eat them. Below the ground, a chipmunk snoozes for a few days at a time. Between naps, it snacks on the nuts and seeds that it's stored in its burrow. You can see his burrow is full of leaves too. Under the snow in a forest, a morning cloak butterfly takes cover in a pile of brush. You see that? Inside a rotting log, a centipede and a bumblebee queen remain silent until spring. 
The wood frog nestles in scattered leaves on the forest floor. It can freeze solid and still survive. Not far away, a woolly bear caterpillar spends the winter curled up in a tight little ball. Just below the ground, a spotted salamander waits out the coldest months of the year. Deeper down, a woodchuck sleeps soundly all winter long. Its heart rate drops and its breathing slows. The animal gets all the energy it needs from its thick layer of fat. Under the snow on a pond, bluegills circle slowly through the chilly water. They don't have enough energy to chase the water boatmen swimming nearby. Those are them. A carp rests quietly on the muddy bottom. It isn't even tempted by the water strider lying just a few inches away. Buried in the mud, a frog and a turtle wait out the winter. They never move. They barely breathe. Under the snow in a wetland, a beaver family huddles together inside a cozy log lodge. When they get hungry, they swim to their food storage pile and munch on some sticks. But even on the coldest winter days, red spotted newts dodge and dart, whiz and whirl just below the ice. As time passes, the sun's rays slowly grow stronger. Each day is a little bit longer. Animals living in fields and forests, ponds and wetlands begin to get ready for spring. What do you see out in that field? You see some butterflies getting ready for spring. And so do you. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. I hope you enjoyed our winter hibernation stories. We'll see you next week.